Jessica. Hi, how are you? I'm doing great. We are back with more uncomfortable, uncomfortable questions <laughs> from pet owners. Uh, and we, we've got a few doozies today. I'll tell you what, you're going to want to stick to the very end today because some of these questions you're just not going to believe. You're not going to believe it. Really? But Jessica okay. will answer them. I will. And uh, if they've got questions they want to answer or ask you directly, Jessica, how can they go about doing that? Uh, post below in the comments, right That's below it. this video. Just post your questions. Oh Absolutely, so, it's that simple. So easy, guys. So let's let's pull up the first one. First one's from Omar. Omar. And Omar looks like he's in the UK. Okay. He has a brand new, as he put it, uh, <laughs> German Shepherd. It's four months old, and he wants to know your opinion on some. This is just an opinion factor. Okay. He has noticed that a lot of dogs can do tricks. They can roll over. They can sit up. They can do all these things. What is your opinion about teaching dogs tricks? Should he or should he not do this? Uh, tell, tell the people what your opinion is. Well, Omar, you know, it's, it's a personal choice, of course. I don't see a whole lot wrong with it as long as you are using positive reinforcement training to get there um, because, you know, your dog is being rewarded for doing the behaviors you're asking. I would say it, it wouldn't be like at the top of my list of things to train with my dog. I would build the communication channel with them by doing simple things like sits, stays, look at me, um, you know, things that are gonna be really crucial, like come, you know, so if your dog is on the other side of the yard and you ask them to come to you, that they actually come to you. So these types of, although they can be really simple to train, like stay and come, these are can be really simple to train with your dog. They're also really, really important. They're really crucial because they can be life-saving. Um, so if you dog to teach, if you <laughs> if you teach your dog to stay when the door opens, they're not bolting out the door and running into traffic. If you teach your dog to come to you when you call them, they're not going to be you know getting into trouble chasing down another dog in the park. So they're they're really even though they, they can be really simple to train, they're going to be really crucial and potentially life-saving. But once you get some of these cues down, you've built a really good communication channel with your dog, of course, all using positive reinforcement. And once you have that communication channel built, there's nothing wrong with continuing with some cute little tricks like roll over or, you know, give me your paw. Um, th these are, even though they're not crucial for your dog to know how to do, you're continuing the communication with your dog, you're continuing building that bond with your dog, you're continuing the the understanding on your dog's part that you ask something, they do it, they get rewarded. So it's going to further build on other cues that you have already taught because you're, you're just providing more and more reinforcement for your dog that, yeah, you know, I ask you to do something and you do it and you get rewarded for it. So we're, we're, we're further building great communication. We're further building reinforcement. More, you're going to have more likelihood that your dog is going to continue to respond in the way that you're asking them to respond because you, you don't stop training. You find other cute little things to, to work with your dog to do so that your, communica your, your communication channel never stops. There's never a delay in it. There's never, you know, a block in that communication channel. So I think it's a good thing, not because your dog needs to know these things, but because it's, it's, it's just building that relationship with your dog and continuing that relationship with your dog. So I think it's overall a good thing. <laughs> okay, Jessica, that was a great answer. That's very helpful. And uh, yeah, it's kind of cool when your dog can do some of those yeah. horror tricks, but it's actually a safety thing because the dog learns to listen to you and in an emergency situation is going to do what you tell them to do. Absolutely. So our next question here is from Nancy, Nancy. Antos. Okay. Nancy Antos. A highlighted comment I see here. <laughs> I get farmer's dog for my dog. Okay. It is fresh cooked food, mm -hmm. flash frozen, and shipped frozen. Yep. The only thing I have noticed is that it's making my puggle gain too much weight. What do you recommend for him? Nancy, thank you so much for bringing that up because I have actually looked into Farmer's Dog before and one of the things about Farmer's Dog is that they ask you specifics about your dog. So it's, you know, you can't go to the website and find 
uh, you know, the nutrition facts for their food because it, it changes a little bit depending on how you answer the questions. However, um, what I would say about Farmer's Dog is that uh, from what I have looked at, because I have filled out the questionnaires in the past just to see what they would provide me, they do use a lot of uh, like rice and grains. So I'm sure that is what is at least a contributing factor to the weight gain in your puggle. I would say I think puggles are kind of prone to easy weight gain to begin with. So we do want to make sure that uh, your dog is getting appropriate exercise, both mental and physical exercise. Um, but yeah, I would say, especially since you are noticing the weight gain on Farmer's Dog, I would say that it would be a safe bet to potentially look at a fresh food, a balanced raw food diet. Um, and I, you know, if you're already paying for Farmer's Dog, I would say that a transition to something like Answers Pet Food is not going to be a huge monetary difference. You're not going to see a lot of uh, um, increased, you know, spending if you switch to something like Answers Pet Food. Um, however, you know, the farmer's dog isn't isn't terrible. I mean, as far as you know, on the rankings of where pet foods lie, it's in my opinion better than kibble. So um, you're, you're already doing really well by understanding that you don't want to feed your dog a kibble diet, um, but we, we are concerned if our dog starts gaining weight. So let's, let's take, you're already, you're already halfway there. Um, I would say let's, let's maybe look at taking the step to a fully uh, balanced fresh food, raw food diet. And um, I think you know, there are lots of really great options, Bones and Company, um, Answers Pet Food, and a few others. Um, I want to say it's Steve. I, I know you're actually, Nancy, I know your name. I know you're already in the group. So um, when you go to the group, if, if you're watching this and you're not a member of the family, if you're not part of the group, the link is in the description. Um, to go ahead and join the group, there's a ton of free files. And one of them is a recommended products file. And another one is what to feed your dog file. And there are links to some really great uh, pre-made balanced raw food that you can buy you know at the store some you can have delivered to you like darwin's pet food um, if you're watching this and you're feeding kibble and you're interested in farmer's dog i will put a link in the description below so you can go check that out and i will also link um darwin's as well because i think that's a really great entry into a balanced raw food diet for any pet whether you have a cat or a dog so i'll link farmer's dog and darwin's in the description below so you can check both of those out um, and again nancy darwin's is also like i just said a really great way to start a raw food diet for your dog as well so i would say with the weight gain let's 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 look at making that leap to a fully raw food diet uh, because you're going to completely remove all of the grains, uh, you know, rice, corn, whatever else they're using, probably chickpea. I'm not, I think chickpea might actually be something that they use a lot of if I remember correctly. And we're, we're gonna remove all of that. So we are, we're gonna be able to see that weight drop. So I hope that helps answer your question as well as anybody else watching as to why um, Nancy is even concerned about farmer's dog, but um, yeah, if anybody out there watching does have any more questions about feeding, I have so many vid videos on my channel about feeding your dog, um, but I will link, go at, or go ahead and post it in the comments. Whatever questions you have, I'm happy to, to help answer them. All righty, that's great, and that was a food-related question. It was. And guess what? The next one is too. We've got something <laughs> else here that I think is kind of similar, but okay. it's more along the lines of actually making food for their dog. Okay. This is from Hara Praya Saw. Hara Praya. Okay. okay. And I'm not sure where they're from, but they, uh, I guess it's like a question. It says boiled rice with boiled chicken is good for dog? Question mark. And what to give as treat throughout the day? Question mark. What do you say, Jessica? Well, uh, yeah, so boiled rice and boiled chicken is not a balanced diet for your dog. Um, so in the past, uh, it has been, it, it is considered a bland diet because there's, it's easy to digest. How, uh, so, you know, a lot of veterinarians would recommend it if your dog had tummy issues, um, digestive upset. 
However, I actually don't recommend rice um, when your dog has a stomach upset. And I, again, I, I, I know I've answered a similar question recently um, in another video, but Dr. Becker actually brought this to my attention a number of years ago. If you don't know Dr. Karen Becker, she is the world's most followed veterinarian and a really amazing resource. But she kind of went into how when we, or your dog, um, in this case, eats rice, it goes through a, a sort of fermentation process in the gut. So it it expels a lot of excess gases. Now, if your dog has an irritated stomach already, like they have you know, digestive upset, and then you introduce something like rice, which is gonna produce a lot of excess gases, it's just going to be additional irritant. So I wouldn't recommend that. What I prefer if your dog has a digestive upset is ground turkey and sweet potato cooked, both cooked. Um, but for a daily diet, no, absolutely, it is not balanced. Um, what I do recommend above anything else is a balanced fresh food diet. Um, if you are not going to be able to make that on your own, the next best thing is a balanced fresh food diet that has been commercially made and frozen. Um, again, I, I just said in the question before, I'll post in the, co in the description below a link to Darwin's. Um, I think it's a really, really great company. Uh, they do make lots of different protein-based um, meals that are completely balanced. They're all raw, they're frozen and delivered to your door. Um, so that ease of having it delivered to your door is amazing, but a balanced diet is definitely what you want to look at. And then the second part of that question is what to give them as treats during the day. Um, I have a lot of videos on my channel on different homemade treats for your pets. My very favorite thing to feed my dog and my dog's very favorite thing to eat is just a single protein, whether it's dehydrated, uh, if I buy it, freeze dried or I dehydrated on my own, that's gonna be one of the best things you can feed, whether it's just chicken breast or chicken thigh or beef or liver or uh, chicken hearts, my dog absolutely loves. So a single protein, just you can dehydrate it on your own, you can buy it freeze dried. Um, I'll also, I can also put in the links in the description below a link to uh, some of the best ones that I love, that my dog loves, uh, which is an affiliate link on Amazon. And you can just go ahead and grab some and have them delivered right to your door. So a single ingredient, single protein treat is going to be the best thing you can do for your dog if you want to give them treats throughout the day. Great information, man. We're kicking butt here. You've knocked out three questions. You solved a lot of problems for a lot of people, but I bet there's more people out there that have more questions. How would they get those questions to you and how are they going to get them answered? Yeah, so the very best way is to just comment below on this video or any other video on my channel leave a question in the comment section of a video. YouTube will notify me and I can help answer that for you. Um, the second best way is by joining the group, joining the family. The link is in the description below. Uh, there are thousands of other pet parents in the group just waiting for you to join. You can post videos, you can post photos, you can ask questions, you can help others by helping answer their questions if you have some good advice for them. And it's just a, a big group of like-minded pet parents and we're all waiting for you to join and ask your questions. So those are gonna be the two best ways to do that. All right, guys, um, one thing I have been getting asked a lot is who is behind the camera asking me all these questions. So I'm not gonna tell you right now, but what I do want you to do is post in the comments below and let me know who you think it is that's asking me all the questions behind the camera. So go ahead and post down below in the comments and let me know what your guess is. All right, guys, go ahead and give this video a big thumbs up, smash that like button, and if you look right down there at that subscribe button and it is red, go ahead and click it and turn it gray. When that happens, a bell will appear. Click the bell, select all notifications. That way YouTube can notify you every time I post a new video. You don't have to go looking for it. That's pretty amazing. All right, guys, thank you so much for being here with me in this video. I really appreciate all of your questions, all of your comments. Keep them coming, and I can't wait to see you in our next video. Hey, thanks for watching. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel so you never miss another video.